My goodness, it's blowing an absolute hoolie out there. <laughs> Coming here to talk to you and welcome to a new vlog. Well, it's like 45 mile an hour winds right now. And KK has just done her first competition on Santana and I am absolutely over the moon as is Sai. She only got over a couple of fences, but she got here. We hacked because it wasn't far from home like 10 minutes hacking which is a really good warm-up and just a great experience. Santana hasn't been out and about anywhere since she's been in the UK. She came over from Belgium um, at the beginning of this year and has done absolutely nothing and we haven't taken her anywhere. So to get up here, to warm up, to get in the ring and to pop a couple of fences I think it's an absolute result. We're delighted. And it, blowing an absolute hoolie. And there was so much for her to see. So she had a couple of refusals um, and was eliminated, which, you know, is, is fine. It's just great, great experience. And I said to Coco, you've got to start somewhere. Like you're never going to be ready. You just have to push yourself out of your comfort zone and go for it. And and it, it was just perfect that it was hacking distance from home. So we didn't need to go through the rigmarole of loading her. She doesn't really like being loaded. So that's something that we need to work on. But we got up here. Coco's best friend came and watched her. Um, so I came up. He's walking home with Lola. And Coco and her friend have ridden down. So I'm going to drive back home and... Um, yeah, sort the horses out and then get inside for, for um, well, it literally was almost blown away. My, I just had a hot chocolate, which was blown out of the cup as I was drinking it. That's how windy it is. But anyway, I'm very, very excited. I'm feeling really positive. Di came as well um, to be here for moral support and, and help Coco. And it's just, yeah, like, just to get up here and I don't know I don't know what she did in Belgium before we bought her like before she came over to the UK so I don't know if she's even like been in a competition environment with you know the buzz of lots of horses and the bell going and all the rats and towels plus throw in a horrifically windy day I mean luckily it's not raining as well at the moment um so I'm, I'm absolutely delighted anyway I'm gonna drive back home and then um Get on with the rest of the day. Hi, I think the last time I chatted to you, Coco, I was in the car and Coco had had her first outing on Santana. And oh my goodness, the last couple of days have been beyond mad. I had planned to vlog, I'd planned to do all sorts of things. And sometimes life just throws stuff at you, doesn't it? Um, Children not being very well, unexpected meetings, goodness knows what, just stuff. And so anyway, I'm here now. I'm just in the middle of filming a recipe for my members club and I've got to wait for it to boil and then simmer. So I thought this was a perfect moment to, um, to natter to you all. Um, new shirt, I've had a couple of compliments on it. I posted an Instagram story and a TikTok earlier um, it's from Beaufort and Blake. I love Beaufort and Blake shirts. Um, Beaufort and Blake and um, the Oxford Shirt Company, I think, are my absolute favourite. And this is this gorgeous needle cord shirt. And I got it in their sale. They sent an email that was 20% off. And I thought, oh, why not have a quick look? And actually, there might still be 20% off when you watch this. So, I'll leave it linked down below. I love their things. Um, occasionally they send me things, which is really lovely, but um, but I bought this and actually, 
I have a confession. I ordered another shirt this morning from them. Um, it was a plaid one, which I just thought would be perfect for Christmas. And that again had 20% off. And I thought, you know what, why not? You live in shirts. And um, so, yeah, and I've never had a plaid shirt. So anyway, I purchased that. Um, yes, I've had an email from somebody with loads of questions and I went back to her and I said, these are such great questions. Can I talk to everybody about them? And she said, yes, absolutely. And I could have done like a dedicated Q and A and put them in there, but I thought we'd just have a chat while I'm waiting for this to cook. I thought we could run through them and hopefully, um, it might be relevant to some of you as well. So I'm just going to take that and put it on to simmer in fact mm -hmm. in there to simmer. Mm. right so i printed off her email um i hope you don't mind me messaging and asking if you could advise more on the mum juggle and particularly how life was when your children were younger so this lady has got three children twins and and a younger younger one so um six and a, two, twins of six and a four-year-old how do you ensure each of your children gets one-to-one -one time with you when they were younger and actually i nannied for twins um and another sibling when i was in my early 20s and we used to rotate the mum and i and the dad and so she, the parents would have one-to-one -one time because there's an extra pair of hands, me, so they could do that. And I think it's really, really important to try and have some one-to-one -one time with your children, however that looks. It is super, super important. You know, I surf with Archie. I will go and do all sorts of things with Gus, um, you know, from... Well, Amy all sorts of things with Gus, he has a very curious mind. And with Coco, obviously we do our riding, but I've just asked her to come up to London on a, a work day, but a, a retreat day for, for both of us um, in a few weeks time. And she was like, yeah, mum, I'd love to do that. So anyway, one-to-one -one time is really important. The phone is ringing, I'll be back with you in a sec. My husband calling about logistics of, of the children juggle, the mum juggle, the parent juggle. It is a constant juggle. So when um, we, ha we had au pairs and we had a nanny, Simon travelled a lot and obviously, so I had huge fertility problems and then we had three children very, very swiftly. Um, three in two and a half years, which was completely bonkers. And I didn't want any help. I didn't have any help when I had Arch, but literally the week before I was due to give birth to Coco, a friend said, Charlie, you're gonna need some help. Um, and I said, no, 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 I'll be fine. <laughs> she said, no, 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 I really think you do. And there's a really lovely Italian au pair who is looking for a new job and she could be perfect for you. And I spoke to Simon about it. He said, yeah, why not? Because he was away a ridiculous amount. So um, that's when Barbara came into our life and I'm still in touch with Barbara. We called her Babs and she was blooming fantastic. And then, um, then, then I was pregnant with Gus quite rapidly afterwards. So we ended up getting a English nanny and she was with us for four years, which was incredible i mean absolutely incredible and i feel very lucky that i had an extra pair of hands um simon worked you know full time and as i say he was aware a lot he has constables up in grimsby so he was traveling all over the world and uh, and the uk and so i couldn't do three babies completely on my own um with no family, no family at all that I could call and say, can you come and help? So we decided that we would get an English nanny. We also <laughs> were uh, rebuilding this house. I mean, completely, massively rebuilding it. Every wall changed. Uh, we replumbed, re rewired, we re-landscaped the garden. I wish I'd documented the whole process because I basically got zero before pictures because it was so ugly. And um, the process was quite stressful because I was managing the, the project with Sai, but it was it was more me. 
and I was here every day on site either with a baby with wonderful Rachel or I'd leave the children with Rachel or I was I was heavily pregnant I and mean, when Gus was born in the house we had to move out for a year Gus was born in the house that we were renting while doing this work so it was a really crazy time and then Rachel stayed with, with us until Gus started at nursery and then and then she left and I'm still in touch with her too she's a gorgeous gorgeous person and we were very very lucky to have her um but I, it, you know, and it still was was full on. And she said, she often said to me, you know, Charlie, it was it was a crazy time. I don't know how you would have done it without me. Um, and and I also started a business when Gus was six months, uh, not one that I'm involved with anymore. But so I was I was working as well. It was it was very full on. Um, but because we had Rachel meant I could spend one-to-one -one time with the children and that was really important for me and I saw that as when I was nannying all those years before that that was really crucial and really important for the children so you know you could do a child swap with a friend if you don't have any help or a parent that could come and look after the others while you go off and do something there are ways around it um, you don't have to pay for help um, that you could, I mean, I did lots of ch child swaps with friends, so I could, um, you know, spend some time with, with you know, one child, or I do, um, my goddaughter who lived down the road would come and the boys would go to their house and we'd do some girly time and vice versa. So find a friend maybe with similar age children and do swaps, and it might not be one-to-one -one time with one of your children, it might be with a friend as well, but, you know, any time where they're broken up and there's a bit of focus time for you, I think is really important. I also try to do, you know, trips with one of them. So, you know, um, whether it might be a trip to London, to a museum, something like that um, is, is, is important. Something that they're passionate about. Gus loves fishing. So him and I will go f fishing together and something that they're interested in and they want to do, I think is important. So that's how we juggled it. And I also juggled bedtime reading. So I read to them all together, but I also read to them one-to-one. Uh, -one. And so one of them would be looking at a book themselves and I would be in the other one's room reading a story and then I'd, you know, swap it round and then we'd have lights off. And I think it's important just to spend some time lying on your children's bed chatting to them it's this it's this time where if there's problems if there's worries they can open up and talk to you and I think um that time for me is really special just you know just kicking off your your slippers jumping on their bed and just having a chat and just making it kind of cozy maybe reading a book um and just talking about the day or or the day ahead or something like that so we'll move on to the next question now I love your tradition of everyone getting dressed up for Christmas Eve and having supper. Have you always done this with your children? If not, what age were they when you introduced it? We, um, we've pretty much always done it. And our lovely neighbours, who I can see their house from here, had a Christmas Eve party pretty much every year for many, many years. And the children were invited and it would be at sort of 6pm. And so we would all get dressed up and we would walk up the lane and you know, I remember holding, you know, certainly one or two of them and one of them on side shoulders in our in our party clothes and going and having a drink. And we might only stay for 45 minutes and then get everybody back and into bed. But it's really special just to put a pretty dress on and the children make an effort and not being in tracksuit bottoms and trainers and you know, we call it their Sunday best and they'd put their Sunday best on and we'd go up there. Um, latterly, we make an effort. I set the table and make it look beautiful and we have a lovely meal here on Christmas Eve. And I think it's really special. My my mum always did it. We used to have a black tie dinner on Christmas Eve. It was very, very formal uh, growing up um, at certain times. And, and that was one occasion where it was always very formal. I had this beautiful bottle green Laura Ashley dress and I remember wearing it with ivory tights and black patent shoes and walking down the stairs on Christmas Eve ready to um, to have you know drink. Mummy would do um, little sort of 
uh, non-alcoholic cocktails, mocktails for us, which was really fun. And you just felt special. It's a special occasion and it's lovely to get dressed up and make a little bit of an effort. So yeah, it's something that we've done with the children since a tiny age. Um, mainly because our neighbours had this lovely drinks party and the, and the children, you know, were, were part of that, which was really, you know, lovely and generous of them. Do you have a budget for Christmas presents, particularly the children? Yes, always set a budget for Christmas. And actually in my Christmas and New Year planner, there is a budget page. And I always encourage everyone to set their budget, you know, early. It's the first thing, first thing you do when planning. And then, you know, have an amount per child that you're going to spend and, you know, try and stick to that so it's fair. Because I think it can be really difficult with siblings, um, you know, feeling that they've, they've, missed out um you know and somebody else has got a much bigger present so I tr i've always tried to keep it as fair as possible between the, the three of them um and yeah i think it's really important to have a budget and i think it's really important you know with family to say why don't we do like a secret santa why don't we pick a name out of a hat and just buy for one person rather than buying 30 presents if you've got a big family just buy one present for a certain person and i think that's a really lovely way to do it and that's what we do as an extended family my uncle has everybody for for a, a christmas celebration it might not be on christmas day or Chris, you know but it's it's a few days before or afterwards and that's what we do and it works really really well and then you're not under pressure to you know things are tight and it's tough at the moment it's been a really 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 tough year again and you know, you need to set a budget, stick to it and explain if you um, are invited somewhere and you feel that you, you can't afford to buy everyone a present. It's better to be honest and say, you know, c c could we do, you know, a secret Santa or could we just do, you know, tiny little things or or something? Is that all right? Um, and people people will be understanding. Um, yeah. Do you have any words of wisdom or things that worked well when your children were little, like sticker charts or consequences and things like that? Um, I always try to keep it as positive as possible. So trying not to say no, not to punish. But if you do say no, you absolutely have to stick to it. And if something, you know, if they do something that is really... I don't know, could be um, dangerous, you know, going to pick up a knife or something, you know, being really firm and then knowing where the boundaries are, I think is really, really important. Um, I used to try and reward with positivity. I'm a really positive person. So, you know, there'd be loads of kind of praise. And if the behaviour wasn't good, I wouldn't praise and I would, you know, let it go. You have to pick your battles. And somebody said, said this to me when Archie was really young, pick your battles. If you're constantly telling them off, if you're constantly saying no, then it's just negative. And children also thrive from negative attention too. So try and keep it really positive. I did do um, a shell jar and um, with one particular child, I didn't do it with all of them, and we put shells into the jar. Um, it, was, it was actually to do with potty training. And I put shells in and once they got the jar was full, they could choose something at the toy shop, you know, within a certain price range, something like that. So try and keep it really positive is my, my advice. Will you be doing any more meal guides with um, family meal ideas and things like that? Yes, I really should do. So that's something that I shall try and work on for 2024. Um, I struggle with the post school snack time and I'm considering giving them supper at 4pm although I'm not convinced they'll stop asking for more. It's really tricky when you pick your children up from school they're always hungry and you know the easy thing is to give them a biscuit but no don't. Um, either takes you know healthy snack um, whether that could be carrot sticks, um, uh, cucumber sticks, some dip, something like that, um, like a little sandwich. I remember when we were little, mum used to bring Marmite and cheese sandwiches for us to kind of tide us through to um, to supper time. We used to have supper, uh, I used to give my children supper at 5pm 
and I would take a healthy snack for them when I picked them up from school and you know whether that was some cut up fruit, whether that was some little finger sandwiches, might be um, a few little cocktail sausages, just some healthy things, could be a cheese straw, something just to tide them through to 5pm when they would have their supper, um, their tea, or whether um, you actually do tea on the go. So if you're picking up you know, four, four thirty, even sort of five, I would give them tea on the go. And I did this for quite a few years because they were ravenous and I didn't want to fill them up too much at like 4 p.m. and then them not eat properly or bedtime was getting a little bit late. So I used to take supper in one of these pots and they loved it. I'd give them a tea towel, I'd give them a fork and I'd give them a pot. And I would do, you know, pasta, obviously not spaghetti, but um, uh, fusilli um, with, with a, a peas and bacon, with bolognese. I might do rice and like an oriental mince. I actually did do uh, chicken noodle salad. I would sometimes take um, a homemade pizza. I would just literally cook some pizzas, put them on the plates, cut them up, wrap the plate in tin foil. There you are and they'd eat in the car on the way home. And I know that's not ideal. However, we had a time where there were after school clubs, different pickups. So one might have to sit in the car and wait for half an hour till the other ones came out. Or there might be like football club and then they were absolutely starving and we weren't getting home till like 5, 5.30. And so they just had tea on the go. So it's, it's about being flexible. It's about shifting things up. It's about doing what works for you. Um, and I know that particularly this time of year when it's dark and they are exhausted and it's cold and it's miserable and they're starving, um, that these pots came in valuable and I've hung on to them. I don't use them anymore, but I've hung on to them just in case. So, um, yes, tea on the go. And then the last question is, did you eat with the children or later with Sai? Um, it depended on what was going on because he was away quite a lot. I'd often eat with the children. Um, but if he was going to be here um, and at a sensible time, I would, um, I would eat with him. And um, I would sit down with the children. I think it's so important to sit with your children, no TV, phones away and sit and talk to them about their day. So I would get a cup of tea and I would sit down and chat to them if I wasn't eating with them. And I think it's really important to set aside time, if you can on a daily basis, to sit down as a family or, or you know, as many of you as you possibly can and chat. I think it's really, really crucial. But I would often cook something that the children would have and then Si and I could eat it later together if I wasn't eating with them. But actually, I quite like eating early with the children. Um, and so, yeah, we'd just see how it was. And if Si was back later, I would then sit with him. Um, in those days, I used to enjoy a glass of wine in the evening and I'd sit and have a glass of wine and chat to him about his day if I'd eaten earlier with the children or we'd just eat eat um, together later. But um, I said, you know, those days I used to enjoy a glass of wine. I can't drink wine anymore. Um, I thought I was okay with champagne, but I had a few glasses of champagne a few weeks ago and it gave me an awful headache. And um, yeah, kind of massively, massively gone off. Um, booze since I've hit my 40s but yes when the children were little I definitely enjoyed a glass of wine once they'd gone to bed. Anyway hopefully that was helpful. I'm going to finish filming this recipe and then we're actually going to go upstairs and have a little bit of a try on of a few things. The pastman has just been and um, I've got a bit chilly standing outside. Suddenly the temperature seems to have dropped. Um, he's been on holiday so we had a nice, a nice chat with this uh, it's from Leia Clothing and I don't know what they sent me. Um, they sent me some things which I shared with you in the summer. They're so, such a clever idea. And, oh, enclosed a little present for you. One of my new colours. I thought you'd, it would really suit you. Oh, that's so sweet. I work with some really lovely brands and um, yeah, it's lovely. 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> very, very festive and gorgeous. So, in fact, this kind of worked today. Should we just put it on right now? Um, I will leave Lair Clothing's details linked for you because they are seriously clever. So, this is how they work. And, you know, great with like leggings, an extra layer. Um, I wore mine in the summer quite a lot. You know, you can just, like if you've got like a jumper or whatever, you just have got that extra, extra bit. You know, you might want to hide this area. You might want, I'm really long in the body, so actually it's quite nice. Um, a lot of tops are quite short on me. So it's quite nice to pop one of these layer clothing bands on just to to break it up. But it doesn't work with my shirt because obviously the shirt needs tucking in. Or you could just let it hang out and have a little bit poking out. But with like a polo neck or jersey or whatever, like that with a navy polo neck would look really fun. Just a little bit of a festive bling there. So um, I knew that they had got some... Uh, new colours because I, I spotted them on their Instagram the other day so that has got a little bit of a sparkle in it so a big thank you for sending that and this is from my other favourite 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 brand I, I think I think Pear Socks was the first the first brand I started working with or definitely one of the first and I am pretty sure that this is from them. I know their packaging. Um, oh, their socks are just, just gorgeous. Oh my goodness, they have completely and utterly spoiled me. So they've just launched their knee-high wool socks and I have been wearing them literal repeat. I bought three pairs, bottle green, burgundy and navy and lovely Alice has sent me these so these are I think these are their brand new ones they've just launched a new selection of of socks and these are their ultra sock alpaca bed socks oh my goodness so Alice said that they had like extra padding which is a bit like their knee high wool ones I'm gonna get their knee high wool ones hang on Okay, sorry, they're worn socks. I just, I, I keep them by the front door for my we with my wellies and then I wash them, um, you know, after a few days. Uh, but they've got this padding and it's just so comfy. And these, these have got the same. Oh my goodness. I mean, those are just dreamy. Snuggled up in front of the fire watching a Christmas movie with a hot chocolate with actually marshmallows is what I feel like doing right now under a beautiful warm blanket. Gorgeous. So I'm going to leave these because I think these would make the most beautiful, beautiful present. And I'm just working on my Christmas gift guide as well. So if you don't subscribe to my mailing list, I'm going to leave that linked down below as well in the description of this video. Make sure you are subscribed because that is coming for you very, very soon. And I will have some exclusive discount codes and um, various other things. I don't have a discount code at the moment for Pairs Scotland, but I cannot more highly recommend their socks. They are dreamy and these are just gorgeous. And then they've got their ultra soft, hang on, these are their alpaca bed socks, but they're not the pat, are they padded? They're slightly different. They are slightly different. These ones are ribbed those ones aren't um but gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so those would make a very very lovely christmas present for somebody um if you are looking for something you know if you've got somebody that's just tricky to buy for actually a gorgeous pair of socks we all have to wear socks and i think that's what's really important this year it's about getting practical like if somebody gave me a gorgeous pair of socks i would be a very very happy bunny don't need to, to, you know, I think socks and soap 
and things like that might be slightly boring, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous present. And it's the thought that counts that is uh, most important. So I've been taking advantage of some of the sales and I thought I'd share with you a few bits that I have purchased. So this shirt, which we talked about downstairs, which I am really, really loving, but don't worry, I'm not going to expose myself. Um, Bowden. Bowden had a really, oh, have a really good sale and I have taken advantage of it and I've got a few bits to share with you right now. So the first thing from Bowden is this green and cream polo neck. It's cotton, it feels really lovely um, and I think it's just super. I just thought it was really fun and bold. Obviously the stripe going that way makes, <laughs> makes me look quite top heavy. So actually I would team it with, um, you know, it's, it's actually a little bit cold to wear it just by itself. We haven't actually got any heating on in the house um, at the moment, um, but I would team it with a cardigan. And I think actually this navy cardigan, this is an old cardigan from Bayford and Blake, works really well. Of course, I've got my peachy belt on and just a really kind of casual, comfy, lovely vibe. So this is my first uh, item from Bowdoin. And actually we're gonna jump to something else and then come back to Bowdoin and you'll see why in a moment. So now I'm going to share this knit with you. This is from Aurelie and they kindly sent it to me. I um, work with Aurelie and I have a discount code for you which is Ask Charlie How, which I will leave here and link down below. Aurelie have got some really beautiful pieces at the moment and this knit does not disappoint. I love the fact that actually it's cropped because a lot of my things are, are longer and it's quite fun to have different lengths. So it's, a, you know, lovely, and I say it's cropped, it's not cropped. I have a ridiculously long torso, so it's standard. But for me, it's, you know, it's on my belt, which is actually, it's perfect. And I just love, I love the stripe. I love the cream. I love the navy. It's gorgeous. And actually, they have this knit in different ways and different necklines. I just thought that this is really versatile because you can either have it open. So actually, it's a great transitional piece. It's not just a winter knit perfect in the spring or a chilly kind of summer evening you can just kind of throw this on over you know a little cami or something it is not in the least bit itchy scratchy at all so I am just wearing it with a simple vest top whereas normally with knits particularly lamb's wool um, and actually with cashmere knits I always wear a long sleeve top but this one doesn't need one so actually that's really quite lovely um you know, just, it's nice not to have an itchy scratchy, and trust me, no itchy scratchy with um, Aurelie's knits. So really, really love this piece. And I have got another Aurelie knit. Let's stick with Aurelie for a moment. And I'm gonna pop that on, and I'm also gonna style it up with some Aurelie trousers too. So I've had a quick change, and hopefully you can see my feet <laughs> just about. I've just popped on some black LK Bennett, just simple suede shoes. These are my absolute favorite trousers I own, and they are the Aurelie ones, which I will leave linked down below. I love them because I feel, I feel good wearing them. And it's really important that you feel good in your clothes. And I do get really fed up with wearing jeans. And I just think that these are really, really flattering, little bit sexy, just great. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. And I have just teamed on. This is um, a knit, which I did share a few weeks ago, I think, from Aurelie. And um, I just saw it with their sort of Christmas things. They've got a beautiful sequin skirt, which I'm lusting over. But I thought this was really lovely and this comes in black as well. So black with the diamante bow is gorgeous. And this just over the festive period, I thought was a really, really lovely look. Just popping on a pair of heels, but you can wear it with flats. Sorry, you can see my ring light there. But just really, really comfy. They are seriously comfy trousers and just a simple knit. And again, it's not itchy or scratchy in the slightest. So you can just wear it either with nothing on underneath or just a simple little cami that I've, I've got a simple little cami on. 
but I wanted to share that with you. So it's a little, little party outfit, not too dressed up, but still, you know, I could go to a drinks party like this. I could go to a school play like this. I could go to a church service. Just a really kind of versatile, easy to wear outfit. And these trousers, I just adore. So remember, I've got my discount code, Ask Charlie How, off all of Orally. And this dress is from Bodin. It is green velvet. Love a bit of green, as you probably know. And I've just teamed it. <laughs> you can see my feet. This room is so tricky to film in. Um, I've just put it with some black heels. But I just thought over the Christmas period, it would be a really, really useful dress. Really comfy, easy to wear. Quite forgiving too, so I could um, overindulge and not worry. Hasn't got, I hate a dress that's tight around here. And this isn't a length, I nearly fell over. This isn't a length that I would normally go for. And I did a try on for Si and he was like, actually darling, it really suits you. And I could wear it with black boots um, and you know, black scarf, coat, and maybe go to church or even song or carols or something like that. But also with flats, you know, whizzing around, serving and doing things or just a little heel. I think it's a really kind of versatile, easy dress to pop on. And no, this wasn't in the sale. The polo neck was in the sale. There were a few things in the sale. Um, they did have quite, I think they had 30% off a few bits, which is why I took advantage. But I don't think this was one of them, but I just thought it was a gorgeous dress and wanted to share it with you. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you is this dress. I love it. I've just teamed it with my boots, some navy tights, and I just, it's so lovely. It's also not itchy scratchy, so you can wear it with nothing on underneath if you want to. Um, yeah, a feral knit kind of wintry, Christmassy dress, I think is just awesome. I love a little bit of pink. And I know, well, I've already worn it a few times. You may have spotted me wearing it um, over on my Instagram um, and TikTok. I love it. And I know that I'm going to be wearing it on repeat. So I will leave these items linked down below that are from Bowdoin. And I need to go and do the horses. And then I'm taking you out and about with me. We are going to something exciting. So <laughs> I'm going to pop my other clothes back on, go and do the horses, and then I will see you later, but it's going to be dark. So I'm at Wakehurst, which is the most amazing place, and it's not that far from us in Sussex. It's part of Kew, it's the Botanical Gardens, and they've got this amazing glow wild on, and I had a fascinating talk at the beginning of the evening about the inspiration of re-glow wild and about, you know, the planning, the preparation, sort of 
months, years, actually, and it's incredible. I'm going to share lots of um, lots of snippets with you all. Actually, I'm about to be plunged into darkness as I'm walking back to the car. Um, but just such a special, special evening. And if you could get, it's near Arding Night. If you can get down to Sussex, um, or if you live in Sussex, I highly, highly recommend coming and having a look around. Not only is it great for families, for children, but for adults as well. It's beautiful. It's really, really magical. I am now heading back. I've got one ill child at home and the horses to finish. So I am talking to you in the pitch black. I apologise. I'm going to talk, finish talking to you in the car. I'm sorry. The lighting is terrible. Hang on. Is that any better? No, I basically look green. I also wore my beautiful Hicks and Brown hat which matches my shirt, but you can't really see. Anyway, Sai um, si is holding the fort at home, so I'm gonna whiz back. I need to finish doing the horses, but I've just had a really, really lovely hour and a half wandering around here at Wakehurst. The attention to detail is out of this world. The creativity, the thought, it's, it is really, really magical. So I highly recommend if you're looking for something to do, to come and have a look around. It's part of Kew Gardens and the gift shop is also incredible. Highly recommend that. I just had a quick look um, on my way out. Beautiful things. And I tell you what, the hand soap, the liquid hand soap and the bars of soap are absolutely the best. The jasmine is my favourite. Anyway, I'm sorry I started this week's vlog in the car. I'm finishing it in the car. I'm going to leave this this one here because otherwise I think it could get a bit long and a bit rambly. But next week, very exciting, we are going to London and I'm going to take you with you. So um, take you with me is what I'm trying to say. So that will be really fun. Anyway, have a super, super weekend and thank you for tuning in and lots of love. Side, Lord.